looking to connect a region of over 600 million bridges between our lands. Welcome to ASEAN in Focus. I'm Jyoti Mera delivering to you the latest news in and around the ASEAN region. And now to the news. President Rodrigo Duterte has directed concerned government agencies to mitigate the impact of fish kill in Taal Lake where over 605 metric tons of tilapia have died, Malacanang said on Monday. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo said Duterte has expressed concern about the fish kill which according to experts is caused by sulfur upswelling triggered by the strong amihan that accompanies an extreme drop in temperature. And I quote, the president has directed the appropriate government offices to closely monitor the situation, particularly the water quality in Taal Lake, said Panelo in a statement. He also required the officials concerned to undertake measures to mitigate the impact of the natural phenomenon, he added. Panelo said the president also ordered increased vigilance over the prices and supplies and the freshness of fish sold in the market. He meanwhile cautioned the public against spreading false news regarding the fish kill, which may only cause undue alarm. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources, or DNR, earlier described the fish kill in Taal as the worst crisis faced by the fish industry. Reports showed that the potential income loss caused by the fish kill is estimated at 42.9 million pesos. The ENR, however, assured that the fish kill should not affect supply and prices adding that the phenomenon is no cause for alarm in the market. Meanwhile, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe met a Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte in Tokyo on Friday for a bilateral summit in which the two countries reaffirmed their friendship and support on multiple levels. Duterte and Abe discussed trade, investment and growing Chinese activity and disputed regional seas. The Philippine president reaffirmed the need to keep up this unprecedented level of cooperation between the two countries in a changing world. At a joint news conference with Abe, Duterte said he was pleased with the growing interest and confident the Philippines is a preferred trade and investment destination for Japanese businesses. Pleased with the growing interest and confidence in the Philippines as a preferred trade and investment destination for Japanese businesses. I am grateful for Japan's fresh commitment of around 25 billion yen for the development of Mindanao's road network, vocational training facilities, and equipment and other projects. Abe pledged Japan will continue to strongly support the Philippines' sustainable economic development, including quality infrastructure projects in politically unstable Mindanao in the South. <music> President Rodrigo Duterte might, might not have the chance to meet Japanese Emperor Naruhito during his recent trip to Japan, but said that it would be a great honor for the Philippines to receive him in the future, Malacanang said on Monday. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo said Duterte made this remark during his bilateral meeting with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe earlier this week. And I quote, The President likewise, likewise conveyed the best wishes of the Filipino people to Emperor Naruhito's ascension to the throne, adding that it would be a great honor for the country to receive Emperor Naruhito and Empress Masako in the Philippines in the future, said Panelo in a statement. Philippine Ambassador to Japan Jose Laurel V said Duterte would not be able to meet the emperor because of protocols and traditions. Naruhito was named emperor after his father Akihito ended his three-decade reign on April 30. He will formally ascend to the throne in a ceremony on October 22. Panelo meanwhile described the meeting between Duterte and Abe as productive and fruitful, as both of them considered each other as a friend. And I quote, Prime Minister Abe gave a heartfelt welcome to President Duterte, 
who he considers as his special friend at the Prime Minister's office in the Akasaka State Guest House, Panelo said. Prime Minister Abe expressed a great delight to see the Filipino chief executive whom he last met in November of last year, he added. Abe also congratulated Duterte for the overwhelming victory of administration-backed candidates in the midterm elections and extended his birthday greeting and best wishes to the presidential daughter and Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte, whose birthday, or whose birthday fell on the day of the summit meeting, May 31. The Japanese leader also mentioned that he looks forward to a fruitful exchange of views with the president on various issues of mutual concern and interest, including assistance on the Mindanao peace process and infrastructure development in the Philippines. In other news, a northern Luzon command headed by Lieutenant General Emmanuel B. Salaman handed over the Mavulis project, fishermen's shelter and fish dryers, to the local government of Batanes last Monday, May 27, 2019, at the Mavulis Island Batanes together with USEC Ricardo A. David Jr. from the Department of National Defense as the guest of honor and speaker. NOLCOM with its objective to optimize maritime entitlements within the country's sovereign territory and promote safety of life at sea in the northern most areas of the country, in close coordination with the local government unit of Batanes and other stakeholders, spearheaded a project to build a multi-purpose shelter which can cater to the needs of the fishermen of Itbaya and outlying islands of Batanes. During the program, Lt. Gen. Salamat highlighted NOCOM's intent to support the fishermen of Batanes through the construction of a shelter for their livelihood fishing ventures, while at the same time promoting safety of life at sea or solace. Aside from the fishermen's shelter, fish dryers were also constructed to support the same objective. All these projects will be properly turned over to the Batanes LGU for administration, upkeep and maintenance to ensure their sustainability. For continuous utilization for the benefit of the Filipino fisher folks applying at that area. Yusik David stated during his speech that the, this fisherman's shelter, otherwise known as Mavuli's project, is a gesture of shared resources from various stakeholders. This is AFP's gesture of support to the Filipino fishermen and manifest their commitment in protecting their sovereignty and asserting their ownership in this territory. Lieutenant General Salamat extends his gratitude to all the partners and stakeholders who, in one way or another, help to ensure the completion of this project. NOLCOM will continuously focus its efforts to further enhance inter interoperability and interagency cooperation and stay true to its mandate of safeguarding the interests of their nation and its people may be, or may they be on land, air or maritime areas. When we come back, our resident as in resource person, Dr. Carlos Tabunda Jr. Interview, interviews our guests for today to tackle the impact of the recent elections in the government bureaucracy. Stay tuned. Buhay. Ito po ay pinata noong 1994 pa. Mm -hmm. So, 25 years ago, ang ganda kasi ng, ano, ng layunin eh, mm -hmm. na makapag-organize ng mga bloodletting drive or bloodletting activities para may maibigay na 
Maninis at libreng dugo. May advantage ang pagdodonate ng dugo. Bukod sa nakakaganda ng katawan, nagiging healthy kasi napapalitan, nare-replenish ang dugo. Mm -hmm. Mula sa dugong alay, dugtong buhay, ako po si Tess Alakartan, isa sa board of director ng dugong alay, dugtong buhay, kaysa ng approve sa serbisyo publiko. And today I'm here at the Japanese Gardens in Portland, Oregon. If you want to experience greenery and unique landscaping, as well as peace, tranquility, tune in to EBC Digital Nest. I'm Maria Marquio and I'm one with 25. Net25 is now available on OSN, the largest entertainment network in the Middle East and North Africa. Watch your favorite Net25 shows on OSN channel 725, same day as the Philippines. Net25 shows live and on demand anytime, anywhere, on any mobile device on OSN Play. Welcome back to Ashan and Focus. This is Galoy Tabunda from the New Year University Ashan Studies Center. Today, we are honored to have as guests in the program former Civil Service Commission Chair Ricardo Saludo and former Development Academy of the Philippines President Tony Calao. And we will be discussing the impact of the results of the re recent elections in the government bureaucracy. Welcome to the program. Hello, Mr. Saludo. Hi, uh, so Tony Calao. Uh, welcome back. Okay, welcome <laughs> back. Uh, because I remember. More than a year ago, there, yeah. there used to be a memorandum agreement between the DAP and the Net25 for the uh, uh, holding of this program, mm. Ashen in Focus. So, hopefully, we will be able to uh, yeah. to uh, renew that again. <laughs> okay. I hope so. Those graduating from or will defeated in Congress. Yes. What, what about the regular uh, bureaucracy person? Well, the, the great majority, of mm -hmm. course, of the bureaucracy are career people, okay. and in, in their case, uh, they'll be now assessing the new priorities of okay. the people who have come in. Now, okay. some of them have been around for a long time mm -hmm. and uh, were were there before, so they would be having the same policies. But the new ones will have new perspectives, mm -hmm. new priorities. And even some of the old ones, they tend to also think of something new mm -hmm. for the next three or six years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tony, you used to be president of the Development yeah. Academy of the Philippines. And I remember one of our programs was to conduct trainings, especially for those newly elected officials. Uh, yes, uh, we had officials. some crash courses for mm -hmm. some politicians before. And some of them are really personalities like okay. Senator Bong Revilla. <laughs> Manny Pacquiao, Manny for Pacquiao, a while, um, this Sarah Duterte, mm -hmm. and uh, vice for them, mm -hmm. together with uh, their family and staff. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's more of uh, an introduction to what they They're are supposed, supposed to, do. to be doing. Okay. And um, it, it, it was effective in that sense that they were able to anchor on certain mm -hmm. learning points, which they actually were able to use in their uh, areas. And do you think the AP is still continuing that program? Yes, I think that the okay. AP, although I'm no longer, I'm retired, yeah. capacity building for politicians and mm -hmm. career people. Mm -hmm. One is the Development Academy of the Philippines, the UP and CIPAG, the yes, Ateneo yeah. School of Governance, and mm -hmm. now uh, the private sector mm -hmm. in uh, the Sensei, uh, where I mm -hmm. recently joined yeah. them, actually. <laughs> uh, our own approach would bring in on the one hand, this is the sensei. Yeah, uh, which again, the center, center for strategy, for strategy enterprise, enterprise, and, and intelligence. intelligence. So this is a, a private organization. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. And as the acronym, sensei suggests, means sensei uh, means teacher. teacher. That's in so Chinese and Japanese. Yeah. Okay. So we were actually precisely trying mm -hmm. to put that across. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, the the approach we take is twofold. No. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, you have people, the the the, the bureaucracy and the leaders want mm -hmm. to know the mechanics. Of years and then I rose to uh, civil service chairman mm -hmm. we 
all that time we're responding to crises and issues that come up every day. Okay. And, and but in a way that is strategic, not just putting out fires as mm. many people try to do. You know, th there's some issue you try to mm. dampen it. No, we 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 think in every. What are the strategic goals of the government? What are okay. the strategic goals of a particular leader? Mm. And how? Can you best address these issues mm -hmm. so that the, the goals are achieved? Yun okay. po yung, that is how we approach. So it's more than, you know, it's more than just uh, responding knee jerk, but really okay. looking at the, the more proactive. Yes, than and, the, and the long term strategic goals. Okay. There are two key yeah. words in the okay. thing that Sensei is doing. One is a strategy, okay. long term, no? long term and then broken down into actionable things the second one is learning okay uh, strategy and learning mm. uh, strategy cannot be uh, implemented if you don't uh, if you just rely on your mm. present stock knowledge yes, you have yes. to continuously learn mm -hmm. the ropes no? so that's where we sort of uh, okay. input for innovation I, isn't that problematic when it comes to governance that you get elected first before you try to learn how is it to be an elected official <laughs> it, it can happen that way. Uh, I mean, it, it has happened that, uh, you know, you're so focused on the election. When mm. you do uh, win, then it's only then that you, you really, you know, focus on the governance. And I can understand why sometimes people might be like that because, uh, you know, you may feel you don't want to waste your time on mm. crafting a grand program yes, yes. of government when in fact you might be defeated. Mm. So just win first and then somehow move fast on the governance. So we're, we're quite happy to assist and help mm. in that area because on our end, we've gone through this process and mm. we, we have in fact a lot of research already on, mm. on how issues should be addressed. Mm. So even if a candidate comes to us and says, I've won, but I haven't really put together a program, <laughs> well, we can help them do that. Okay, the final word. Uh, okay. There are two kinds of people who mm. go see us or who went to the AP, mm. for example. Those who were preparing for an elective position yes. and therefore they enrolled. Yes. Okay? The other one was they, they, they won first before they got mm. into <laughs> enrollment. Yeah. Uh, whichever it is, the important thing is their own realization yeah. that it is not enough. While they have the stock knowledge, uh, it is not enough for them just to anchor their what they intend to do uh, on what they know. You have to really be. Uh, although personally, as oriented. a public administration educator myself, I tend to look at it at, in a certain negative manner because uh, you, you're aiming for this position. You should have prior preparation for that's this That's the position. ideal thing. That's the ideal thing. <laughs> but this is how our politics work here in the Philippines. Uh, one of the people who went through the AP was Senator Bong. Mm. Yeah, Senator Bong. Bong yeah. Before mm. he became vice governor of Cavite, mm. he came to us. Mm. Before he ran for governor, ganun din, nag, mm. nag aral muna. Before he ran for senator, that's also what he did. Before, huh? not mm. after. Even so the, uh, in, in, the more ideal scenario would be, of course, I, I, I hope you will agree with me, the more in, ideal scenario would be f before you, uh, you aim for, a, uh, for an elective or a government position, you should be prepared for that. Yeah, right? absolutely. That's the <laughs> ideal thing. Sometimes there are time constraints. I mean, for instance, you know, take Bato de la Rosa. Mm. I mean, he was busy with the PNP. Then mm. he had to be... He had to work with the corrections, mm. and then he, you know, he dropped the correction. Mm. You know, he resigned and ran for office. Now, how much time did he have to yeah. prepare? Okay, before you and know? final question: yeah. What's your comment on uh, th there was this bill supposedly filed by uh, uh, the late uh, Senator Miriam Defensa Santiago, uh -huh. who who uh, who said that. Uh, any elected official should be at least a college graduate. What can you say about that? Well, it's a good idea. Of course, it has to be a put in the Constitution. <laughs> okay. It, it, you cannot do it by legislation alone. Mm. Uh, the Supreme Court will immediately shoot down mm. adding conditions or qualifications to any office mm -mm. that is not in the Constitution. If you add something, it will be taken out. In fact, they struck down a law before, a provision in a law that required drug tests mm -mm. for candidates. Yes. <laughs> they struck it down. Why? Because it was imposing mm. an additional condition mm. Mm. for candidacy. But mm. that should be a requirement. Yeah, uh, I think, well, it, uh, these are debatable. Yeah. One can debate Rash it. But, but rationally, yeah. that should be a, yeah. I think that should be a requirement. Yeah. Okay, and any final word, Tony, <laughs> before we... Well, uh, uh, the important thing in people winning mm -hmm. uh, 
elections is that uh, you have something that you'd like to do for the country. Okay. And you, you, you need strategy for mm. what you intend to do. And you need capability. Mm. So that's where institutions like Sensei, mm. DAP, UP, mm. and the others come into the picture. Okay, we'll catch the full length of this interview in Ashen and Focus Weekend, and we will talk more about the services of the Center for Strategy, Enterprise, and Intelligence. In the meantime, I'm Kaloy Tabunda. I'm on the 25. Back to you, Judith. Thank you very much, Dr. Kaloy Tabunda, for that very special interview. And that is the latest news in the Southeast Asian nation. Stay updated about the ASEAN region. I'm Judith Timera, and I'm one with 25.